Good afternoon and a warm welcome. Um, it feels a bit odd to welcome you while I'm uh, not in my own place. My name is Sven Biskop. I'm from Egmont, the Royal Institute of International Relations uh, of uh, Belgium, and I am temporarily squatting the stage here at Bruegel, but you'll be uh, um, relaxed to know with the, uh, with the agreement of Kuntram Wolf, the director of, uh, of Bruegel. Um, we are very happy uh, at uh, Egmont that we are able to manage to co-organize this event uh, jointly with Bruegel. So a warm thank you for willing to do this and for willing to, to host us uh, also. We are very proud today, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome a very special uh, guest, Mr. Jin Li Chun, the president of the uh, Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. I know you have a very hectic uh, schedule today, so we all appreciate that you take the time also to, to speak to us here from the uh, think tank, academic, and, and, other, and other worlds. Um, I'm not um, going to uh, give, present you with a very long uh, introduction, uh, if only because myself I'm more of a defense specialist rather than uh, any specialist on banking. But perhaps the most useful thing that I could do is to say just two words that I think otherwise you're going to ask to Mr. Uh, Jin Lichun, um, so that he can focus on other things. One is that the Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank is not a Chinese bank, it's an international bank. And secondly is that the AIB is not a bank of the Belt and Road Initiative, it's an infrastructure and investment bank for all of Asia. But it is of course a Chinese initiative, the AIB, and I think here in Brussels, here in this city, uh, this was mostly seen as a very welcome initiative because I feel that the EU especially thinks that in this day of increasing great power competition, if one of the great powers actually takes the initiative to launch a new multilateral institution and opens it up to multinational participation, how could we be against it? The AIB, therefore, in a way, is a bank like any other, meaning that it also has the same problems as other banks. Uh, such as the uh, Asian Development Bank, which is that we, one may have a lot of good ideas, one may even have a lot of money to invest, but there's also such an issue uh, such as the absorption capacity of the country's concern. That too is something that the EU itself has already discovered. So not only as a matter of principle, but also as a very practical matter, I think there are excellent grounds for cooperation between the European Union, uh, between China and particularly between the AIIB. So we're all looking very much forward um, to your presentation, Mr. President. And may I invite you and Director Wolf to take uh, the floor here. Thank you. So I think you should speak from the table. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Director Wolf. Uh, thank you, Professor Biscop. Uh, thank you so much. It's really my great pleasure and to be able to meet you and speak uh, to you. I know there's lots of confusion between the Belt and Road Initiative and AIIB and what kind of AIB is all about. So I hope uh, I can clarify some of the things. And after I speak, I, I, I will really will look forward to your questions. No question would be brutal for me. No question would be hostile. Any question for me is friendly and welcome. So you feel comfortable, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, I first, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Bruegel and Egmont for inviting me to speak. Uh, on behalf of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and uh, our staff, I, I really would like to share with you our thoughts about what we are, what we are going to do, and how we are going to do, do it. Uh, Asia's role on the world stage is increasing, thanks in large part to the growing economy, demographic changes, technological innovation, and more importantly, enhancements in corporate and state governance. Asia is at a critical juncture, but what we do now or fail to do will determine the world we and our children will live in tomorrow. The goals for a greener, 
cleaner future have been set, but the clock is ticking. And these challenges are tough problems to solve, and only by acting now will Asia be able to overcome these obstacles and reach the, its full potential. It is within this context that the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank was born. These challenges, um, and a bank created with the mandate to invest in infrastructure and other productive sectors to support economic development in Asia. We are in the 21st century. Let me quote W.B. Yeats. In Easter 1916, he said, all changed, changed utterly, a terrible beauty is born. What is this terrible beauty? Globalization with some of the side effects, the challenges, probably, the rebalancing of the economic or political powers between the so-called developed countries, developing countries. You can interpret this beauty in many, many ways. But I do not in, interpret the word terrible as something horrible. If you look up the word in Oxford English Dictionary or Webster's English Dictionary, it just means daunting or formidable. It's not horrible. So the beauty is beauty, but you will have to deal with the, this beauty in a new way. Funded by the taxpayers from our 57 founding members, and now we have 84. Belgium would be a full member very soon. I'm looking forward to Belgium's full membership in a couple of you know, uh, weeks or months. I had a wonderful meeting with the finance, finance minister this morning, and uh, we are so delighted to have Belgium, and, uh, along with other European countries, to be our members. We have now 84, and the membership is still swelling. AWIB has been applying high standards of governance based on international best practices to build the institution. As a result, we have received a AAA rating from all the three international rating companies 18 months into operation. And we're very happy to have the uh, uh, Basel Committee's banking Banking Committee giving us the zero risk weighting. So we are able to go to the international market for bond issuance to finance the infrastructure projects in our member countries. While we are still early in the stage in the startup phase, we aim to be a bank of choice for the sustainable infrastructure investment that will drive Asia's future. We are driven by our core values of lean, clean, and green. We are not mean with our clients. We might be mean with ourselves. I, I keep a very tight budget and uh, on all of the activities. Sometimes I'm so tough. The vice presidents are screaming, you know, you have to give us a little bit more. And a question I often ask them, each time you spend money, please ask yourself, are you spending the AIB's money as if it were your own? If you don't ask yourself this question, don't spend a single cent from our bank. Lean because we have a focused mandate and we strive to be nimble and client focused. As you see, as a newcomer in the AMDB family, we have the luxury of learning from the well-established institutions, such as the World Bank, EBRD, ADB, or other multilateral development banks. We try to have different model soprani. We want to create a kind of you know, working condition in which skills are more fungible, and we want to make sure no talents or experts will be locked in any particular region. They should be able to move around. In this regard, I really follow the practice of private sector companies. Being lean is not easy. We are two years old. 
But how about we are 40 years old, 50 years old? Are we sure we will not accumulate a lot of cholesterol, a lot of fat, uh, in order not to have this kind of problem? Like me, I go to gym every day. So we would have to be very careful. I told HR, when you recruit any people, when any department goes to, goes to you for one more position, making sure, ask them, is this going to be a kind of redundant position? We will certainly try to farm out some of the businesses outsourcing is important. But so often you see some people, they would ask for budget, they have consultants, and they are sitting there twiddle their thumbs. Everybody has to work, and I work myself. So when I, um, I, I'm not a desperate, I'm not a demon, okay? So I said, when I start to send you email after 9.30, after I return from gym, you don't have to return emails to me. You just go to sleep. But they all send me back emails. <laughs> and if you want to see whether they propel the email, go to bed, and uh, the email was sent to me 12 midnight, whether they were already fast sleeping, it's not true because you can see this exchange of emails. Uh, I, I'm really impressed by the morale, high morale of the staff. And let me tell you, uh, we sent the first mission to Afghanistan, which I visited in 2004. Uh, we have two vice presidents visiting Afghanistan. That night they went there, bomb. It was, there was terrorist attack in, in the Intercontinental Hotel. Now people are safe and, uh, because we know how to deal with terrorists. The terrorism will not create any roadblocks on our way to help countries which need us. I remember uh, when I was the vice president of ADB, I went there uh, risking my life because it's a so-called post-conflict country. And uh, we, we had a team uh, staying in the intercontinental hotel, same continental hotel. And when they were, they were having, about to have dinner, bomb, you know, they were attacked by terrorists. Fortunately, none of them were hurt. But that kind of thing would not stop us from investing in infrastructure projects in Afghanistan. And the question is, if the countries need us, and if we are not there, who else? So being lean would make us to financing the infrastructure in a most cost-effective way. Clean. We have zero tolerance of corruption. And we make it very much clear. Whether it's the international competitive bidding or our corporate procurement or recruitment or promotion, all these are high-risk areas. No corruption is tolerated. If anybody is involved, he or she will be kicked out right away. No negotiation. And uh, green, we promote green economy. We believe investing in infrastructure should not leave a big footprint in environment and ecosystem. We have only one planet in which we can live. People talking about moving to Mars, I don't think so. Mars is not as good as a, uh, the Earth. And recently, uh, the, uh, there were some other new discoveries, but forget about that. Just to make our planet better, more livable, we protect our own planet. So we do a lot of uh, projects to deal with climate change. We improve, we believe, we believe that only by supporting infrastructure and at the same time improving environment could our development be sustained? <coughs> our challenge at AIB is to take the experience of our members and partners to 
inform a Made in Asia approach to develop infrastructure solutions for the 21st century. To date, we have already approved 24 projects <coughs> in the total amount of 4.2 billion US dollars, covering 12 countries for the first two years. Um, we managed to do this thanks to the strong support of the World Bank, EBRD, ADB, uh, because they co finance with us. <coughs> Partly because we start to build up the pipeline while we were still in preparing to set up this bank. So uh, we managed to do this, but quality is the priority. And I do not intend to build up this bank, the build this bank's uh, program too fast, to the neglect of the quality. We want to make sure each and every project we finance would be a success. The success is defined by its impact on development, by the environmental protection, by the acceptance of the local people. We will not do anything which the local people don't like it. Nothing is going to happen. People don't choose. In this regard, I would like to clarify the issue, which is the relationship between Belt Road Initiative and AIIB. Uh, is AIIB created to finance Belt Road Initiative? Certainly it's not. Uh, these two initiatives were certainly created Promote, pro proposed by the Chinese leaders. But they are different, serving different purposes. There's a kind of relationship. AIIB is a multilateral development institution which operates independently by international best practice. We have our own governance. We follow the best practice. We are on the same same bar with the World Bank, EBR, the other institutions when it comes to governance, when it comes to anti-corruption, <clears throat> when it comes to protecting the human rights of the uh, project areas people. And focused on infrastructure and other productive sectors. AWI, uh, a Belt and Road, Belt and Road uh, initiative is in my, and to my understanding, is a platform the platform would be good for all of the participating countries to work together to develop connectivity. President Xi said, Belt and Road Initiative is based on the principle of broad consultation, joint construction, and shared benefit, which means it's not something which China would dominate. It's a kind of a cooperation. It's a cooperative approach to improve connectivity. But you know, I, I find some subtle change in the, in the coverage of the Bell Road. At the very beginning, they were saying, oh, how many countries which are belong to the Bell Road uh, area? 67, 68. Um, but you know, after the Bell Road Summit in Beijing uh, in May last year, I think probably they're having some, you know, Subtle change, for instance, how about the countries? I think it's more than that. Um, we say a maritime Silk Road. Maritime Silk Road has traditionally been considered the maritime Silk Road, which is westbound, leading from China or other Asian countries to Europe. But now, South America or North America countries have very close relationship with Asia. The maritime Silk Road could be eastbound. So, I think it's very hard to say the Belt Road countries are simply 67 and 68. How about Africa? African countries are aspiring for faster growth, improving the livelihood of the people. And then, as you see, the Asians and African countries have ever-increasing relationship. 
in terms of trade and investment. So we need to do more in all those continents. When we have now 84 members countries from all of the continents except Antarctic, and you would have to ask yourself a question, what does it really mean when you say, what is the geographical coverage of Battle Road, or what is the, what is the coverage of the AIIB? But since we have 84 members, and I think probably we will have eventually 90 uh, from all of the continents, um, there must be quite a number of Belt and Road initiatives, projects proposed to us for us to finance. That's inevitable. But when all those projects are proposed to us for financing, we will look at three basic requirements, financial sustainability, and environmental friendliness, and social acceptance. We will not do any project no matter how profitable, if the latter two conditions are not met. So uh, this is the clarification, and, and I hope you will understand. We are not created for Belt Road Initiative. If there are good projects in the Belt Road Initiative you know, areas, we are very much willing to consider. And um, also, we, we are guided by three thematic priorities. First, sustainable infrastructure, cross-border connectivity, and private capital mobilization. Every project we invest must meet the three criteria. They must be financially sustainable, environmental friendly, and socially acceptable, as I highlighted. But we also should not lose sight of the need to build new and different types of infrastructure for better adaptability to future environmental standards and challenges. You see, if you look at the projects we finance, if you look at the end product, a road, a power plant, a transmission line, you may not see much difference except that the road project, the power project built in the 21st century might be better than the power plants you built in the last century. So in terms of engineering or technical part, probably you won't see apparently any major difference. So what is our contribution? Our contribution is in the process of financing. We will do it more cost effectively we will take into the interests of all the stakeholders, and the decision-making process would be more democratic. That is the difference in the whole process. But the difference between the traditional process and the, our new process is that we may be more cost-effective. For instance, I keep telling the uh, government leaders of all those countries, traditionally, uh, development bank would be running out of capital every maybe decade or something. And so they would go back to the shareholders asking for money, capital increase, which is really a big headache, if not uh, just the, the United States, but also some other country. And so my view is we should have a new development bank. We should be able to build up its own intrinsic financial strength through its cost effectiveness, model supranty. The bank must be able to accumulate capital internally without going back to the shareholders asking for money again and again and again. Is that possible? I think so. It calls for the new approach to run this bank. And uh, we also, uh, want to make sure that all the infrastructure projects are well co coordinated, balanced, and integrated in a way that maximum benefits can be garnered. An airport, an airport or seaport should not wait for the construction of roads or railways 
connecting to the to be con completed. A power plant should not wait for the transmission lines or the other way around. So when you talk about infrastructure, it's very much important to make sure it's balanced. And also, the infrastructure means improved connectivity between Asia and Europe, Eurasia. But how about policy coordination, customs policies, regulatory policies? It is horrible for you to see a train loaded with goods would be stopped at the border because there was lacking in the customs you know, policies. I think it's very much important for us to see the software part will not adversely affect the hardware part. No matter how good it is, if you don't have the policy coordination, the infrastructure investments you do will not achieve its maximum benefit. That's why our bank is placing an emphasis on a sound strategy for resource allocation, and we try to promote policy dialogues among all of the member countries. Um, it is very much important uh, for us to, uh, for me to highlight one point here, since I'm addressing the European audience. When we started to uh, work on the creation of this bank, I made a very much, uh, I made a point of talking to each and every major European countries, including um, Belgium. Uh, when I came here uh, four years ago, uh, the inevitable question raised to me would be, why do you want to invite us? What's good for us? Um, why do I invite you? Uh, you know, I'm throwing a party tonight, and the invitation cards are being sent out. And if you happen to find your name missing, what do you feel about it? <laughs> so, whether you like it or not, I think I'm in duty bound to invite you as a friend. What's good for you? You see, the economic relationship between Asia and Europe is so strong. 40 years ago, when China embarked on the reform and opening up program, I was posted to the World Bank in 1980, uh, fresh from the uh, graduate schools. And uh, you see, the per capita GDP is 280, a paltry 280 US dollars. How much could you purchase with $280? 40 years later, actually 30 years later, the Chinese consumers have such appetite for European goods. I'm worried whether Swiss you know, watchmakers could be fast enough to producing the high brand watches. I'm also worried whether the French or Italian luxury manufacturers can meet the voracious appetite of Chinese tourists. I think I would say the Chinese tourists that make a mockery of tourists because they were all in Lafayette and these kind of places. They, they don't look at your beautiful landscape. They just gaze on the luxury goods. This is only part of China. But what if other Asian countries can also reach the purchasing power level, what is a good market for Europe? Germany benefits directly from the Chinese appetite. They want German-made cars, okay? Not just the BMW or, or Mercedes. They want to say whether it's made in Germany or made in China. Anyway, uh, I, I do hope uh, the Europe and Asian relationship would be further strengthened. God created such a massive continent, Eurasia, but God leave it to the humans to deal with the connectivity. Okay, that's your job, God said. I, I, I created this huge land for you 
you improve it. Now we have to really do it. So it's good for European countries. But what is important for us at that time? This is what I highlighted. I want European countries to join this bank because I believe you will be the best guardian of this institution. If China create this bank with only a string of borrowing countries joining it, waiting for money, do you think it's possible for us to convince you this bank will be operated by the highest possible standard? So we want to set the bar very high. We want to have the best practice, best international practice. You can help us, and this is true. You see, the Asian countries account for 75% of the shares. European countries and non-European, non-Asian countries all together account for 25% of the shares. This is the share or voting power. Now look at the management team. Out of the five vice presidents, three are Europeans. Sir Danny Alexander, the former chief minister in Her Majesty's Treasury, working for George Osborne, and uh, David Cameron is our vice president and the corporate secretary. <coughs> His job is to deal with the board, which is non-resident. And vice president, Joachim von Amsburg, who was the vice president of, a, uh, of the World Bank, moved to our bank. He's German. And Monsieur Thierry de Longmire, the French national, who used to be the CFO of the ADB, who worked for me when I was there. And then later on, he became CEO for uh, African Development Bank, and he came back to ADB. He's now our CFO. Three. Only two vice presidents are Asians. And if you look at the, uh, some of the uh, important positions, like chief risk officer, German, uh, compliance unit, we call it, this is the independent unit which reports directly to the board, compliance, effectiveness, and integrity, headed by a British national. And uh, we have the inter chief internal auditing officer who also can directly report to the board is a Singaporean. Okay, so if you look at these members of the management team, you can be assured of the way we operate. When the three rating companies came to our bank for rounds of rounds of discussions, before they make a decision to give us a kind of a rating, the question they raised to the uh, board members and uh, the other senior management members is, we would like to know, how does China control this bank? How does China dominate the decision making in this bank? The answer is a straightforward, no. We don't feel it at all. In the management team, I'm the president, I have six years on the board of the World Bank, five years as vice president of ADB, five years in Chinese sovereign wealth fund, and three years in Chinese private company, plus 30 years in the Chinese Ministry of Finance. I know if we do not operate this bank by incorporating all the good experiences of the international institutions and try to deal with some of the uh, issues, uh, perception issues or whatever, it is not possible for us to have this bank be in the first class institution with the, first, with the 21st century governance and nobody would believe it, right? <coughs> so in our executive committee meeting, we discuss thoroughly every issue before we reach consensus on making any decision. No decision has ever been made without thorough debate in the executive committee and handed down. 
It never, ever has happened. So for me, uh, it's very much important. Actually, I can tell you here, when a very good friend of mine who's an American, who came to see me, when he got it on the grapevine, I was going to be part of creating this team. He said, Mr. Chin, as a good friend, please take my advice. Don't do it. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, you know, you have enjoyed a very good reputation over the last 40 years. I don't want to see your reputation destroyed. Our last boast, I said. I had got very clear message from the Chinese authority. This is going to be an international bank. It's not a Chinese bank. And I would do it independently. And I'm not, I don't think my reputation will be destroyed. Thank you very much. But thank you very much. Thank you. Now questions. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, um, President Jin. That was a fascinating, a fascinating exposition. And before, before we open up for questions from the audience, um, I think it would be worthwhile to, uh, to ask you uh, to dwell a bit more. I think it was a fascinating exposition on you know, how you run the bank, how hardworking your team is, um, <coughs> and you yourself, of course, how uh, good the governance mechanisms are being set up, and also what are the aims of the institutions in, some, in terms of sustainable finance and so on and so forth. Now, if, if I sort of look at it, I, I would love to get a sense from you where is it that you think you fit into the global architecture mm -hmm. of international um, development banks, infrastructure banks, and where do you make a difference compared to those that, that actually exist already? Now, if you look at, let's say, the World Bank, good governance, sustainable finance, I mean, these are all the words that will also be used by uh, the CEO of the World Bank. And yet, um, after having operated for such a long time, the World Bank in some quarters is extremely unpopular. In 30 or 20 or 30 years, what will ensure that you will not also be seen as an unpopular institution such as the World Bank is currently seen? And where are you different? I think President Kim would feel very uncomfortable when he heard you said the World Bank is unpopular. In some quarters, uh, <laughs> I said. In some quarters. But anyway, uh, let, let me highlight this point. Uh, I have had uh, uh, very good conversations on many occasions with President Kim. I admire him for his guts to undertake reforms in the World Bank. And he is a man fired with aspirations and good ideas. But when you have an institution to deal with, with the historical baggage over seven decades, hmm. it's not easy. I don't think it's impossible, but it's, it's not easy. For instance, he intended to, I think, uh, slash the uh, people on the payroll. He want to lay off 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. You see the resistance. It's like fighting with a huge army, right? Um, that's why I said, in our bank, we should make sure we will not have redundancies building up over the next decades. Mm. We have to be very careful. Mm. So uh, I want to, I, I normally ask the senior management member staff to, to make sure your people are not twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> Nothing to do, right? And the workload should not be crushing. You know, you have to take care of the, your uh, staff's health. But you should understand. You so, so senior management should not look at the details. I never, I hate micromanage. I don't want to micromanage. Mm. You just make sure you have sufficient number of people, not too many, not too few, and that you give them the latitude to manage. Because you must believe the staff who come here Quite a lot of people taking a big cut in their paycheck. They work for you for what? Because they think it's such a great thing to work to build up a new institution. Mm. But I think this kind of uh, <clears throat> thing should be, the momentum should be kept as we move forward. As long as we keep lean, 
I think we would not have this, they, these kind of problems. And also, we learn as a newcomer, we can learn from them. Give you some of the examples, very much. That's why I said five years in ADB and six years on the board of World Bank helps a lot. Helps, really helps a lot. Um, for instance, World Bank has trust funds. How many? Maybe thousands, 3,000, 2,000, 3,000. Trust a fund. The government would give you money. And the government would give you some secondies. They would say, do this, do that, do this. In our bank, I would not take any political agenda imposed on our bank. Not from any government, including China. Now, we don't have uh, soft loans like ADF or IDA. We only have a little bit money from China, UK, Korea, and our Hong Kong for the, the we call the special fund to support institutional build up and the project preparation. Learning from the World Bank, we have AIB special fund. You want to chip in? Welcome. You want your name? We will put it in the list. You want to have country A fund, country B fund, please take your money back. I don't want it. So we have only one fund. And the fund mm -hmm. money would be, managed, would be managed by the management, certainly. Up to a certain uh, level, we will discuss this with the board. We don't have the resident board. Mm. The resident board, the World Bank has 25 seats, 25 directors, taking out the five which are of one country, either appointment or constituency. You have 20 with the alternate is from a different country. Then you have advisors from some other countries. So if the resident board member comes to knock on your door every day, once a week, how much time is left for you to handle the normal business of the bank? I don't want to have the resident board breathing down my neck every day. I want to focus on the real business, OK? So we have Sir Danny, who's dealing with the board, which is now resident. Give you one example. In the first year, the total cost for this bank's staff, it could be less than the money for the board if we had a resident board. <laughs> okay, to say nothing of the fact, we have only five vice presidents. If we have the resident board, I think I must create a three or four vice presidents to deal with the board. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> one more thing. Have you ever thought about this big problem. Over the last seven decades, the resident board approves virtually everything. Policies, operations, mm. specific investment projects, or programs. So as management, do you have any concerns you'll be kicked out because of failure? Never. Because the board approved everything. If the right. project fails, the board cannot kick you out <clears throat> because you did not approve it. It's the board who approved it. Can you kick out the board? Of course not. That is the vacuum of responsibility. Mm. This problem has been there for the last seven years. Nobody talked about it. That's why when I lobbied the European countryside, this is something we want to fix. I told the European countries, I said, I'm asking for trouble. Why should I do that? You approve. I enjoy my life. But I don't want it because we are revolutionaries. We want to reform the whole system of MDBs. That is why we have accountability. If you don't want to have the accountability, you don't work here. That is what we are doing now. That's why I say, when we create this new institution, the people who came to negotiate 
are the bureaucrats who may be in charge of the World Bank or ADB or EBRD. So I said, you have to move out of the intellectual ghetto to create a new bank. If you don't do that, you would end up having the same kind of bureaucracy. <laughs> so I admire President Kim and the president of other banks because they have been doing a huge amount of work. I'm actually going to Zurich for the regular heads of MDB meetings. We are working together, learning from each other, but I'm sympathetic. You know, I'm lucky because I have a clean slate. Mm. If they are dealing with the problems which were not their responsibility, and I develop these kind of problems, I create these kind of problems, I would say, they are not guilty, I'm guilty. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I see a question there at the back, all the way at the back, the lady. The lady. Thank you very much, Lubov Proina, Bloomberg News. Um, I have a question on uh, a few numbers that you have mentioned. Uh, you said that you're looking towards membership of um, 90 countries. Could you be a little bit more specific on that, which countries and what's the timeline? And also you said that over two years you got uh, 4 billion uh, in, in projects. What's the outlook for 2018 and 2018 perhaps? Thank you. Uh, so if, if, I, if, you, if you allow me to collect a few questions. Okay. Yeah, so. but anyway, uh, let, let me, let me uh, my understanding is your, your, your questions about the uh, geographical coverage. And we have uh, 84 now, but some of the countries have not yet ratified the, the uh, Article Agreement. They are not full members, such as Belgium. And we expect these countries to be full members by the end of this year. With regard to the financing, we finance in Asian countries, we can finance in non-Asian countries. The uh, Articles Agreement stipulates that AIIB can finance in any member country, non-Asian countries, if the financing is good for Asia. So in that sense, if we do a port project in Panama, that can facilitate the transport between South America and Asia, which is good for Asia. If we do uh, some, you know, for instance, <coughs> uh, uh, railway projects in Africa mm. and the linking uh, the countries to the east coast or west coast, that can cut the transportation cost with Asia, which is good. One important area is the projects we deal with climate change. Climate change knows no national boundaries. That's why we support uh, renewable projects, or renewable energy projects. We believe it's very much important for us to help the developing member countries to meet the increasing demand for power without leaving a big footprint in environment. The way to do it is certainly re renewable uh, energy project, but also improve or updating the transmission lines. Now, if some of these Asian countries, systemic loss could be as high as 30%. You don't have to build new power plants spewing carbon dioxide. You just improve the transmission lines. Mm. Cutting the transmission lines all the way down to below 5%, like the European countries, you know, amounts to, it amounts to building numerous power plants. That's what we do. We think it's very much important. Mm. And we also support uh, mass transit systems so that people will not be uh, attracted to drive their individual cars. You know? So I think uh, if you have the very good mass transit system, which will be good enough for the people, then the emission would be reduced. So we are doing a lot of things to, uh, to help uh, the member countries. Now, a remarkable feature of the bank is we don't have part one countries, part two countries. Part one is supposed to be the donors. Part two is supposed to be the recipients. We mm -hmm. don't have that. Right. Any member can borrow from us even the OECD countries. But so far, OECD countries are not borrowing from us. <laughs> uh, my, 
my, my definition, is, as a joke, I'm not, I don't think there are developing countries, developed countries. I think no. there are three kind of countries. Emerging economies, emerged economies, submerged economies. <laughs> so if a country is submerged, regardless of its previous status, we help them, you know, lift them out of the water. So, well, per perhaps we can talk a bit about, about this, this latter aspect. So, so you talked about a variety of different projects, but to me it's still a little bit unclear how do you define projects, uh, how do you choose projects, and how do you define them. And let me, let me push you a little bit more on that. I mean, one point that you made was that every project needs to be a success. And I'm wondering whether that is not, in fact, a contradiction to what a development bank should actually be doing, namely taking up risk that the private sector would normally not fund. Because if, if a project, by definition, is a, is a success, well, why hasn't the private sector funded it in the first place? So, so can you tell us a little bit yeah. more, how do you define projects, which ones do you choose, <coughs> and you know, how do you make sure that they are success? Very good question. Uh, with regard to selection of projects, uh, it's ac actually two-way traffic. Right. We are approached by the sovereign governments, private sector, or project sponsors. They gave us ideas. And then we will look at the country balance, <coughs> sector balance. And we, when we, our people go out to the field, they may be processing a project and bring back some new projects. So project selection is done uh, with different kind of approaches. You know, we want to make sure that for us to consider, OK, it's very much important. The project should be shovel ready, which means the, the mm. project sponsor or the government should do a lot of homework. Mm. So this is another lesson to be learned from the World Bank or other institutions. Don't try to get involved in a project which is only a vague idea or which is only some, some, something on paper. You'll be dragged down in this kind of process and you, have, you will encounter lots of problems. For instance, a very simple question. Now, what if you, as a local people, heard World Bank is going to finance a road project in your area? Of course, a good chance will come. You know, you're looking for a windfall. Hmm. So. so you don't want to move. You ask for very high levels of compensation. And then the government will find that they are going to be bankrupt if they meet this. And if you don't give you money, you demonstrate, right? P particularly when you have professional demonstrators who will make a living out of it. So I'm not going to in be involved unless you acquire the land, you prepare everything, and I'm sure, I'm satisfied that people are properly compensated for. Then I, I will step in. So, so this, is, this is a very important lesson, you know? I'm not saying that people shouldn't be properly compensated. They should be. But people should not put their individual interest above the collective in, uh, interest. Let me give you one example. When I was in ADB, our staff made a mistake. They, all, they were building a road. But in the middle of the road, there were a cluster of a village or something, households. They refused to budge. They refused to move. The staff made a mistake. They, they moved the road maybe one kilometer away from the village, bypassed the village, thinking it's all right, no environmental impact. But they did not do the environmental reassessment mm. and send this reassessment to the management, to the board. When this is done, when a new road is built, all these families say, we want to move. Because they lost the opportunity. <laughs> so my view is projects should be shovel ready. You give us a clean slate. Mm. You have a clean bill of health for me to look at it before I will consider whether I will be involved or not. If the government does not do a good job, does not do good homework, I will not do it. Because this also would enhance the responsibility of the project sponsor. Mm -hmm. You don't kick this, you know, impose this on the, on the shareholders. 
Now, another issue, risks. Taking risks, in my view, is important in any business. But taking risks does not mean the risks will, be, will become losses. Risks are the kind of factors which would be a problem for you if you don't take care of it. So if you are fully aware of the risks and try to do everything possible to mitigate the risks, you will be successful. Mm. But when I say we want to make sure every project is success, it's simply the aspiration. You know, I don't think we will not make mistakes. But given our decision-making process, I can assure you that we will avoid big mistakes. Mm. We can minimize the incidence of mistakes. And we must have the guts to acknowledge we made a mistake, and we will try to correct the mistake right away. Not, give up, not cover up the mistakes, not sweeping all these things under the carpet. That's why I have this unit which reports directly to the board. And I will not tolerate any covering up of these problems. Mistakes, yeah. So I can, I can say that, unfortunately, there will be some projects which would be a failure. Right. However, overall, you will we, learn from we it. should, yeah. yeah. So let me collect uh, three questions in a row. Uh, so I see the lady here, the gentleman there, and uh, another lady there. Hi, thank you. And I'm sorry, I cannot ask, uh, uh, give Can everybody a chance to. Uh, Hi, please. thank you for coming. Um, my name is Ludmila Silva. I'm from Brazil, so I'm not part of the mm. European audience. I represent the ESS. We promote South-to-South -South cooperation. And whether rightfully or wrongfully, um, the AIIB um, has, in some quarters, this reputation that it was created uh, to support the development of the uh, One Belt, One Road project from China. Um, now, the, the Chinese infrastructure projects, if I may be blunt, uh, historically have um, exported Chinese labor. Uh, and in terms of development, um, I spent some years in the World Bank, like yourself. The, the World Bank did not have this um, sort of imposition of having you know, foreign labor come with mm. the project. You know, we worked in Washington. We didn't go out and, you know, shovel to build highways. We, you know, they hired the local labor. And that also ur ursures in development. Uh, so, so how do you reconcile that? And the other question that I have, um, I was a little bit struck when, when you said you want the governments to come to you with projects that are <coughs> shovel-ready. And again, part of the work that we did at, at the World Bank, at the IDB, at the OAS, were projects that perhaps were, not, were more altruistic in nation. For example, building schools for girls in Muslim countries where sometimes you know, it's not in the top of the agenda for some you know, local villagers. Um, so, so how do we address that? Because that's a huge part of development. Thank, Thank you. you. So we, co we collect. If you uh, we collect all the correct yes. questions. So the second question was there, uh, or the third now, but OK. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, um, I want to ask a question about China, not because your uh, nationality... Please identify yourself. Oh, sorry, my name is Alessandro Gallo, and I'm a student on, on Chinese issues. And uh, uh, my question is not because your nationality is Chinese, but because I have a, a, an interest in, in China. And I would like to know whether you can spend a few words about the policy of the bank uh, in investing in Southeast Asia, uh, in countries like uh, uh, Myanmar, Laos, or Vietnam whether you think that this uh, investment may have an impact uh, on the issue of uh, um, the immigration that China is experiencing from the Southeast, and uh, if this uh, uh, immigration uh, may have an impact on the cost of labor force and therefore have an impact uh, on the production of China. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Then, uh, then I had a question here, the lady here. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I think we have to... Okay. okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's about right. Thank you. Uh, Elisa Gerano from DG ECFIN, uh, European Commission. I will be very short as I'm an economist. How do you ensure uh, public debt sustainability? Debt sustainability. Public oh, debt, debt sustainability. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. How do you ensure public debt sustainability? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think, I think this gives us four questions, uh, and I think you have uh, five more okay. minutes or so. Okay. Very so. good. <laughs> Maybe I should st st uh, stand up, all right? <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I, I clarify the Belt Road initiatives are not the same thing as our bank. And also, please, I want to point out the way China pushed for Belt Road initiative does not mean China would follow the practice 
of its external support over the last couple of decades. They should be different. Because Belt and Road Initiative is actually, as I said, a platform for everybody to work on it. It does not mean China should be involved in all of these areas. That's the kind of misunderstanding. Now, in the bilateral support, uh, when, I, when, you, when you look at the project finance, the part China Development Bank, Exim Bank, I think it's true that some Chinese laborers uh, would be exported. This is the product of the negotiation between the countries working with China. First of all, China normally would bring a group of managers, engineers, not really large number of uh, manual labor. And also, sometimes, when the Chinese have the workers over there, this is because sometimes uh, the practi practical difficulty is they can complete the project within the timeline without any cost overrun or the, or the prolonged implementation because the Chinese works, works very hard. But this is whatever the case, the, the end of the negotiation, the result negotiation between the Chinese and the host governments. Now, we are different. We will never ever finance a project for any country and uh, we will bring Chinese laborers or Indian laborers or whatever to any country. It's not the way the World Bank practices. <coughs> we won't do that. So that's the fundamental difference between the multilateral development bank and the bilateral development institutions. So to my knowledge, uh, for instance, there are a couple of cases. Uh, the <coughs> local labor, uh, partly because of the skills, partly because of, of the, the way they, they organize themselves, they manage themselves, uh, you will find it takes a l much, much longer time to, to do the project, to say nothing of the quality. So I think you, you will find the Chinese now helping the local governments to build up the capacity. So at least Chinese only need to give them managerial expertise rather than giving them labor. And, and uh, uh, Shovel really thinks, you know, we, we do not finance uh, social projects, education, something like that. Um, early in the stage, Shovel Ready projects are very much important for us because we cannot, we cannot uh, allocate so much resources for this or that kind of project. But the World Bank and ADB are also learning because, as I said, if the host government is not doing properly its homework, you get in, it will be a huge problem. Actually, building a hospital, uh, building, hospital <coughs> building school, it's, it's, it's easy. Whether it's shovel ready or not, I think every house school is shovel ready if you are given a piece of land. But as long as there's no dispute over the land acquisition, it's fine. What I mean exactly this, if we finance a road project, we just want to make sure, are the people properly resettled? Are they properly compensated for? If there are no legal issues, we can move in. So that's what I you know, interpret as shovel ready. But uh, maybe decades later, uh, our bank may also finance infrastructure, <coughs> non-physical infrastructure projects. If you see, we said AIB finances, uh, promotes broad-based economic and social development through investment in infrastructure and other productive sectors. So in the negotiation period, people ask me, Mr. Chun, what do you mean by other productive sectors? I said mm. other productive sectors is other productive sectors <laughs> so in the future, okay? Now, uh, Southeast Asian countries. We actually started to uh, negotiate the setting up of this bank with Southeast Asian countries, such as low-income countries like Myanmar, Cambodia, and uh, Lao PDR, some of these countries. I don't understand uh, your, your question about immigration. Uh, you don't see the labor mobility in Asia as in European countries. That's different. Uh, to, to, to my knowledge, in EU, you know, labor mobility is free, even though you still have kind of problems. 
but, but it's basically free. And in Asian countries, uh, I don't think the governments have this kind of agreement. Uh, there could be labor you know, uh, immigration. But, but one thing I think is very much positive. If, when we develop infrastructure projects for these countries, they would create huge business opportunities for the people, for the private sector, so that the local people would improve their living standard. Give you some, some very interesting cases. Lao PDR. Lao PDR is very poor. And when China, uh, China and Thailand wants to build roads and railways through Lao PDR, Lao PDR in many, many, many years ago was not interested. They say, you build a road cutting through our land? What's good for us? Because they did not understand. They did not understand. When you have a road, you have a railway, the economy along this road, in this corridor, would develop. Now they understand it's, it's important. So I don't think this is a problem, OK? And debt sustainability is a good question. You see, we finance, we finance, we will increase the financing for non-sovereign backed projects, which means private sector operations. That will not add up to the public debt of the borrowing countries. So this is good for us. But even for, for the sovereign guaranteed project, what is important is to make sure the project is well designed, the project will fit into the need of the country, the project will not be created waiting for other things to help it, like a power plant waiting for transmission lines. So a very good design of the project and on schedule implementation <coughs> is key. So the infrastructure project will promote uh, other productive sectors, private sectors, that you can start to generate revenues. So what is the issue is not whether you would borrow some foreign money. The issue is whether you can generate the foreign exchange resources. In China, in 1980, when we, I was involved in the early 1980s, when we borrowed money, World Bank money, to build a road, some people thought it was crazy. You use the foreign money, put it on the dirt. How can you repay? But you see, after 15 years of infrastructure investment, China started to have huge export. You see, that is why don't look at the way you have to borrow money. Look at the way, how can you generate resources? A project completed on schedule is most important. Don't look at interest rate. Interest are not very much important. If the project is delayed for 10 years, look at the Manila Airport Terminal. Thank, thank you for not thank citing you. the Berlin uh, Airport at this stage. <laughs> So uh, please, uh, uh, please join me in thanking President Jin for his very frank and great intervention. And we look forward to further interaction. Thank you. Thank and you. also on behalf of Sven. Thank you.